Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our session with Michael today on this beautiful June. We have the 17th of June, 2023. And of course, I'm here in Minnesota in the northern part of the United States, and we're calling to Germany today. And we have Michael on the line. And Michael's got some very valuable information for us and the rest of the world uh, having to do with Bruce Lee. And I think this is what, the fifth session today, Michael? Yeah, it should be. Hello, dear Brett. Hello, dear listeners. Uh, actually, it's not only about Bruce Lee, that, but you will soon see that, I think, from the start of uh, session seven or eight, <laughs> because uh, I would never have uh, started that session if uh, I would not have seen uh, something which is even more, much more important and is also related to this event. Yeah. So Well, it's interesting, nonetheless, because... Uh, Bruce Lee is such a, I mean, the, the man just is full of charisma, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I think that he's one of the main idols and, and been worshipped as a demigod. Yeah, that would, I would clearly back up this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. But that is a that right. is an image which has been created on purpose, yeah, because yes. it's it's just an it's just like a brand like Coca Cola or what else, yeah, uh, that is just an image that people would like to uh, to worship, uh, because everybody knows, yes, I want to go, uh, I want to be so good as Bruce Lee. Uh, we will also come across this in the session because I don't want to spend my life on, on going on to, to a Chinese uh, actor, martial arts superstar. But there's much more behind it, which also leads to our current time. You can already guess that it has something to do with his uh, ominous death, which is officially being declared as a death by misadventure by having him ended over one equagesic pill. That's an aspirin. That's a painkiller. Yeah, and you, there's, there's so much to it that I think uh, usually people would never see and would far extend uh, any other uh, usual secular research that we have really have to dig in because then we see all the ties uh, to, to modern media and, and the like. Yeah. So let's get it on. I hope that there will come up some interesting stuff. Once again, this is the warning of a commentator who said, you dare criticize Bruce Lee, prepare for the wrath of his legions of fanboys. They have already wrecked the dislike button and the comments belong to them. Why? Because many people, including me, when I was young, we were idolizing uh, Bruce Lee uh, because we have been bullied in our use. So therefore we imagine that, oh, if we could do karate or kung fu or any other thing, we would not be bullied around anymore. And so of course Bruce Lee was an uh, identification figure for all the usual guys. You see that Arnold Schwarzenegger on the other hand maybe is very impressive of his, uh, of his body size. But not anybody has the size and the genes of Arnold Schwarzenegger. So for a regular guy standing five feet seven and a half, weighing a maximum weight of 140 pounds, everybody could identify with the stature of Bruce Lee. Brad. Good point. Yeah. Also, that was at the end of the 60s, beginning of the 70s, where, you know, summer of love, free love and all the things were floating around, you know, so that many, many people was just having a good time. Well, he was in every movie, he was being presented bare chested. Yeah. And he has an, had an awesome physique. And that was not known in that time in 1970s. People with six packs abs. That was not common. Yeah, people with low body fat was not common in the 60s, 70s. That territorium belonged to bodybuilders, athletics guy, yeah, gymnasts and all the stuff. But you see that to be presented in that way in, on the cinema, uh, that was a, a kind of a new rare feat. Yeah, so let's get it on. 
yeah that's why they are just uh, presenting him as as a statue and uh, as a role model for all the people and and of course once again yeah this is hard to see here because it is during the night time in hong kong i think it is could be anywhere else because statues of him are floating around all over the world they are being positioned in europe on the four continents if i remember correctly and of course he's also here bare chested so he's uh, half naked here you know presenting his muscles See what I mean? And it's just all about the ego. Huh? It's all about him expressing himself. Himself, have faith in yourself. Yeah, it's nothing about God, worshipping God. Who has given you the physics, the body in the first place? No, it is all about the self. Yeah, and why is this? That's uh, quite obvious. Yeah, so first of all, let's go on to the humor sections. You see, everybody wants to be like Bruce Lee. Yeah, everybody wants to have abilities. Everybody wants to, yeah, wants to wants to show up. Yeah, and it's just hilarious if you uh, see all these videos of fake martial artists and all these uh, people. Sometimes I have a hard time imagining that these people are uh, seeing this for real. Uh, maybe they are just some committee actors, but it's just uh, very, very obvious that uh, many people are absolutely overdoing things and uh, just simply like to show off. Yeah, this is a very old video. <laughs> it's a very old video, I know, but what to say about it then uh, that people want to be a star and if you have these abilities that bruce lee and uh, some other rare people have yeah of course he was going into the physical direction i really have to show that because it, it's obvious that these people do not have any big abilities but you see that nunchakus also would be Bruce Lee. <laughs> yeah, this is the famous Swiss apple from William Tell. Yeah. Yeah, and the apple does not fall far from the tree. Yeah, maybe these people would be handy on the construction side, I do not know. Yeah, so much so. <laughs> Poor guy. But there is so much bullshit you will not ex you 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 cannot imagine, yeah. Sri Lanka's got talent with a pentagram on it. Sri Lanka's got talent. Once again. Just for the heck of it. They want to be a superstar. Yeah, that means they want to be a fallen angel. Yeah, and he achieved that. Ah. Yeah. See, see the girl here with the third eye. Yeah, these are all worshippers of the self to be enlightened. Yeah, Sri Lanka. Yeah, that's in Asia, guys. Just want to show this, just in comparison. Yeah, so I know nothing. It is very interesting to see that all these self-enlightenment, these Luciferian sp spirits, so to see, um, has been promoted big time. Um, when you see it about these uh, fake uh, dim muck and fake uh, martial arts and Frank's Dux, Frank Dux, uh, he's very infamous. Uh, he retired as a world heavyweight full contact committee champion, although this committee, uh, this uh, fight most likely never did ha happened. And he fought 329 matches and all that stuff. You see, this is all just opinion and uh, that has no substantial uh, value in itself. Yeah. And and this is this is the thing that uh, I when when I started that. Uh, I realized that I want to sell you 
um, a gung fu and their abilities of these masters, be it Tai Chi or what else, yeah, um, as a kind of a supernatural thing. And that's also not very far fetched <clears throat> because you have to uh, see for yourself that uh, most of the most of the people who are being presented in china is are some related to the shaolin monks so we're talking about a monastery yes yeah? so we're clearly talking about a religion and so not science is also only a religion yeah but martial arts the arts of the roman god war god uh, uh, the art of the roman war god mars is also a worship of the Roman god Mars. So it's martial arts, it's a worship. Yeah. So, and you see, this is just Hollywood. These are just uh, effects. Yeah, of course, this is absolutely bullshito. We talk this, it's BS, it's bullshit. Yeah, you see what's it all about? Yeah, oh, you have to uh, destroy the uh, upper stone. Uh, you have to destroy the lower stone. Yeah? Oh, stone spread, uh, okay. And if you are 15, 16 years old, maybe you believe it. There's uh, some kind of a death touch. Yeah, dim muck. Yeah, that's also one of the rumors, these theories why Bruce Lee has died or any other people have died because of the deathly touch of a special trained monk or anything else. Yeah, so you could kill somebody with your bare hands by just concentrating. Yeah, you see, these were the BS theories that people have put in place uh, long before the internet. Yeah, that's my point. Yeah, you see, we're talking about superstition here. We talk about supernatural events. And I got some more example. The example I now got is Sadhguru, a guy who has been seen as a guru. Maybe he said only a sad guru, but not a sad guru. He has been criticized for promoting a number of pseudo-scientific claims. Well, we have been accused of doing the same, so that is not just uh, anything of value here, but uh, that is just a guy who is practicing sun salutations. Yeah, and uh, he comes up with a different explanation of it all. Sadhguru exclusive, the secret behind Bruce Lee's lightning speed exclusive. He said, oh yeah, there was once an event where there was a man who fell into a swimming pool because Bruce Lee used the Manu Paruka Hu and the man will just fly. Yeah, the man made him stand there. He was in the swimming pool and then he sent that man flying. A 185 pound man went and fell into the pool with a three inch punch from that superhero Bruce Lee. Mm -hmm. Because Bruce Lee used the Manu Paruka. That's Sadhguru telling you. Hmm? <laughs> Manu Paruku is uh, a so called chakra in the body. So something which has not been uh, detectable. Yeah, it's just another religious belief system of the Asian people. Yeah? Sadhguru speaks about Bruce Lee's incredible abilities to use the body and mind in a phenomenal way. Sadhguru exclusive. And he says, yeah, well, such a person who can use his force will not live long. So I'm not saying this only with the relation to him. Anyway, he is dead. That's easy to say, not in that context. Satguru exclusive. Yeah, innocently, they have shown these things and some other things. There are yogis who, who move it and you are using it. And so, yeah, one who moves his money, Puraka, should not move his body. Yeah, if you move his body around, he will not last long. He has to go. Yeah, so this is the wisdom of Sadhguru. This Sadhguru guy has a followership on YouTube of millions. He's an Indian yogi, a mysticism, and a best selling author. He has founded the Isha Foundation, non profit organization, who distributes yoga programs on the entire earth and social initiatives, etc., etc. Manipuraka is um, the navel chakra, a synonym for Manipura chakra, the third energy centrum, where it is in the middle of your stomach. Yeah, so that is the Manipuraka. So that is the secret of Bruce Lee, Kate's closed. 
according, of course, only for Sadhguru exclusive. And there are some things that you have to believe, that there are sutras, mantras, mudras, and that everything has some uh, meaning and some effect, and that your body is only consisting of uh, energy things. I'm not speaking about points in acupuncture who would work. I'm speaking about chakras and all the stuff which you really, really have to believe. And you have to believe in special powers or in psychic powers also. You have to believe there is a chai, a chi, uh, floating around the body in China. That's why it's called chi. Yeah, so that's the universal energy of life. That's why it's in China. And you can also call it reiki. Then you are in Japan. Yeah. And it has names in other languages as well. Who are now escaping me. Oh, it's uh, all gone. Yeah, in Europe. Yeah, that's uh, been very prominent in Europe. So it's everywhere around. It's in Prana in India, if I remember correctly. I will look it up later. Yeah, so they're talking to you that your body has uh, magical powers that you only have to focus and then you can create uh, any of your imaginable abilities. So to be a superhuman bread. Does that sound familiar? That's not me talking about this, it's Sadhguru. Yeah, and that Sadhguru, we will look it up, not that I will any, make anything up, that Sadhguru on a Brutzeli. Yeah, the secret behind the power of Sadhguru. Yeah has 2.4 million hits on YouTube and he has a fellowship, fellowship of 11.3 million subscribers. 11 million subscribers. So more than two or almost two and a half million people have seen that video. Maybe 200 people will see our video, Brad. But that's the way it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you see, um, he's got a big follow fellowship. immortal dragon and all the stuff. These people that do not know anything about the Bible, I suppose. Yeah, Sadhguru. Sadhguru also tells you, or here, well, here's the English explanation, located above, above the navel, Manipuraka, or Manipura translates from Sanskrit as the city of jewels, alternative translated as resplendent gem or lustrous gem. Manipura is often associated with the colors yellow, etc., etc., associated with fire. Um, oh, sorry, I don't go into all this stuff. Sadhguru also advised you what if you get coronavirus? Yeah, and he answers uh, to 7.6 million subscribers a long time ago in 2020. That's when I started that script actually in 2020. Yeah, he said the best thing to do if you get infected is to follow the doctor's advice and stay isolated so that the COVID-19 is not spread to others through you, Brett. So he talked, to, he talked about this to 7.6 million of subscribers. It's the same guy who sees himself as a guru who said in the World Economic Forum of Klaus Schwab, they want more souls, I want less on that planet. And he was uh, laughing out loud. Yeah, He wants less souls on the planet. So people whom he do not see as valuable have to go. So this is your guru. And he's a puppet of the World Economic Forum. I'm sorry, I do not mean to be rude, but if you won't like to see that, you won't see it. But these people are just puppets on a string. And these people will be founded. These people will be invited. These people have free speech. Yeah, and these people are influencing millions of people. Yeah, with their arguments against mankind. They want to get rid of people. It's the same thing as Bill Gates says, if we do a really good job on vaccines, we can lower the world's population by maybe 10 or 15 percent. And Sadhguru says, yeah, I want less souls on the planet. Although this guy is not educated because he lives in this fantasy world. 
people will accuse me of uh, being in another fantasy world. He's living in a fantasy world where the earth is spinning because he's speaking on a planet. Yeah, But these people serve a satanic agenda to get rid of people and to delude people, to deceive people. So that's why they call it a planet, Michael, is because they're planning this stuff. Mm. And they have to tell you in your face, oh, yeah, we want less souls. Yeah, he told right in the open. You can look to that video. Yeah, it's yeah. a conversation with Sadhguru at the World Economic Forum in India's Economic Summit. Yeah, at three minutes and six seconds. He says, I want less on the planet. Yeah, I think it's, it's very important. Three minutes, six. Yeah, so I can prove everything that I'm claiming. So that's the serious condition that uh, people have to be aware of, that there are many, many people who claim themselves to be supreme, brighter, smarter or what else, and that they claim they can uh, really uh, decide uh, who's going to go and uh, who's going to stay on this uh, so-called planet. Yeah, And he says it's all for the sake of the nation, the sake of humanity, yeah, responsibility and all the stuff. So he's a puppet. He's like a puppet from the Pope. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, keep sufficient distance. It doesn't matter your friend or foe. Yeah, minimal contact with people, distancing. Yeah, you see that this guy is talking about Manipuraka, uh, Manipura uh, energy from Bruce Lee and all the stuff. And he has followers of more than 10 millions. Yeah, sorry, guys, you are all been deluded. And he talks about Bruce Lee. Getting back to the video here, Bruce Lee's lightning speed now. He's talking about Bruce Lee like an almost superhuman. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, Bruce Lee, a martial arts phenomenon. In another video, or Mr. Harari here, also working for the work on the economic forum of Klaus Schwab and also working with the papacy and the Vatican, he says, we are upgrading men's to gods. Yeah, we are upgrading humans to gods. Yeah, that's what uh, Mr. Yuval Noah Harari says. Yeah, and uh, Sadhguru says uh, Bruce Lee was almost superhuman. Sure. So, in the next step, I can imagine that people say that, okay, yeah, now I'm a skinny guy like Bruce Lee, maybe I can then beat up heavy guys or bullies. Yeah, so people who are really diehard fans, like this number one fan channel on the internet called Beardy, I suppose that this guy has a beard, he's coming up with extreme interesting content, but not necessarily correct content. And his claim, his opinion is that nobody, no human on this planet, again, yeah, guy is deluded, not knowing anything of the Bible, no human on this planet would stand a chance against Bruce Lee in a fight. How can anybody tell this, yeah, when there are much more heavier guys around who have uh, decades of experience fighting somebody for real, for money, and are in life-threatening situations every day? How can anybody claim this? Yeah, 140 pound guy versus a 250 or 300 pound guy. Much more bigger, much more reach, much more experience and all the stuff. This is delusional, but you see how diehard fans they are. Yeah, you see that I have to prepare of legions of fanboys putting their wrath on me and putting bad comments and negative thumbs all over the place. But then you are not realistic. Bruce Lee is a movie actor. He did not have decades of experience like a Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard, Tommy Morrison. I know many boxers and I know boxers in person. It's a different situation if you do something for training or somebody is out there who gets paid money yeah, to hit you right in the face and that's blood all over the place. That's an extreme situation. I'm not taking anything away of the abilities of Bruce Lee, but you have to be realistic. We are just facing with people who are claiming us that Bruce Lee was superhuman, that he could beat anybody. And this is, is, is it's total fantasy. It's fantasy. 
Ja? Beardy also claims that Steven Seagal had a real fight with Bruce Lee, so there are no substantial claims that uh, Steven Seagal actually fought Bruce Lee, and that's also hilarious because uh, Steven Seagal uh, was way more younger than Bruce Lee, but that's just, you see, people tell you everything. Yeah, Bruce Lee was extremely fast, uh, that's why he was called uh, Bruce Three Kicks, because he could deliver kicks so fast. People would tell you that he was almost superhuman because he could lift somebody. This is on the stage of Enter the Dragon in Hong Kong. He could lift up a man. And um, yeah, you would say that, oh yeah, that requires a lot of strength. But, and I have a big but with that picture here, because you do not see the entire picture, Brad. That is not just lifting up a man. I will decrease that picture. Look at his feet. Huh. Yeah, he has lifted his right feet, so it could also be that there was somebody approaching him, uh, pretends to fly over him, and that they two work both in cooperation. You see. But it's just easy to have a picture, and everybody said, "Oh, he was like Hercules. He was ultra strong and all the stuff." Of course, that guy was very skilled, and he was very um, um, strong for his size. But uh, pictures and movies can easily fool you. I can show you somebody who has real strength if these photos are correct, but I have seen other people achieving this feat, and I would say in comparison, that's another kind of a level of strength. Would you agree on that, Brad? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So these horses, they are weighting around, I think, 1,000 pounds. We're not speaking about a 200 pound man, but a thousand pound horse. And I know of other people who did that. Yeah, so they want to sell you all these images and idols beyond their own abilities as Superman, that they will ease you of all pain and that they will solve all your problems. Yeah, so it's like in these uh, magic bullet scene from Matrix. And Matrix means womb. And by the way, this movie has been made with uh, several biblical references. Now that guy is called Neo, the One. Yeah, so the Savior. That's why he has dark sunglasses on. Yeah, so he's not the Savior. That's uh, that Matrix movie is also an ex extremely spoof. There's everything has been mixed around. The good guy has been called uh, Morpheus, but Morpheus is the Lord of the Underworld. So that is Satan. And the ship is called Nebuchadnezzar. That's also a biblical reference of an old pagan Babylonian king. But of and and, and the, the woman is called Trinity. Yeah? So it's also a pagan concept. But people just uh, look at these fancy words and say, "Oh yeah, that was a great scene when uh, the bullets uh, missed him because he was another dimension." Yeah, he was superhuman. Keanu Reeves was superhuman. Huh? Although his. Uh, so-called boyfriend has allegedly been uh, sacrificed. Yeah, I think that we have talked about that during David Bowie's sessions. If not, it's not that important. I just want to show you this. This is just all this stuff. People will claim that uh, uh, Bruce Lee was so fast that it, uh, he had to slow down because he could not be catched by the camera. And so therefore, um, these people have, uh, have always and already um, been uh, uh, manipulating his movies because he was so fast and nobody is so fast as Bruce Lee. I have seen very fast fighters and uh, I believe that there are some people out there who are at least as fast as Bruce Lee was. But you see that he's been sell sold as an idol. Mm -hmm. Why he was so fast, it's very, um, it's very obvious. Um, I have seen uh, dozens of uh, videos and movies about it. Uh, somebody, I can't remember the name of uh, this uh, mister here, he says uh, he could read you before you surfed or before you had sparred or anything. He could read you. That's uh, that's the main thing here. So that's what I told you last time. Well, to be very fast, you have to counter attack an attack. Yeah, not to defend yourself, but to have a counter attack. So in the minute that somebody is trying to hit you, you, ha you are hitting him. Yeah, not wait until the other guy or girl or whoever 
has uh, delivered his punch or his action, but you have to hit him immediately, as immediately if you realize that uh, somebody is starting an action towards you. So he moves his body, his shoulder, uh, he blinking his eye and all the stuff, so he could read you. Yeah, and that, that is the only thing that fighters have to do. They have to read their opponent in order to uh, beat and defeat them. Yeah, so he was very fast in just realizing with his eyes, with his senses, yeah, that somebody is going up to, to take any action towards him. So, that guy also said it's different because he would be very lucid. Yeah, I found that very interesting, Brett. He was very lucid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, comes from Lucifer. Yeah, so, ugh, that guy again. Yeah, he was very clear, he was very transparent, he was very understandable and uh, translucent and, and what else he meant by that. So, show that to you. The camera lens right here and tell us your name, your age and where you were born. My last name is Lee, Bruce Lee. I was born in San Francisco in 1940. I'm 24 right now. And you worked in uh, motion pictures in Hong Kong? Yes, uh, since I was around six years old. And when did you leave? Yeah, so he came well, from... Well, <clears> from it's a, bad to say the bears, but... Uh, he, he came from a family of actors, that's not what I meant. I'm just uh, looking for his uh, speed and abilities. Uh, you really have to admire for the guy for what he did best. He could really impress people. Um, he was extremely fast. Yeah. Yeah. These are just natural yeah. reactions. Right, right. That is natural. Right into the camera. Cheat into the camera a little bit and show this again. All right. Go ahead. There is the finger jab. There is the punch. There is the back fist and then low. Of course, then they use leg. Straight at the groin. All come up. Or, if I can back up a little bit, they start back from here and then come back. <laughs> All right. It's kind of word. Uh, he, he has nothing to worry about. Now, no. once again. And he was an actor. He did also an impersonation of James Dean. When uh, when he was young, he was born 1940. So when the James Dean movies were broadcasted in 1954, 55, yeah, he was a teenager, 14, 15 years old. And now I found a very interesting old German book which I have in my possession. That book is from 1994. And that book hit me as the title Phenomenon, uh, The World of the Unexplainable. And on one of these chapters of that book, I found, uh, um, can Mammy bury the life and, uh, and survive? Uh, can somebody uh, be uh, hit or uh, KO'd by directly hitting it? And uh, there are some means to increase the ability of the human body. And uh, every man is Superman. Yeah, you see, you see here a yogi in contemplation. Yeah, you see guys uh, kicking around on a construction site. And of course, you can imagine why I have shown that uh, book here to you yeah with gurus and inner fire and biofeedback and all the stuff and then you guess it yeah there's a picture of bruce lee in it yeah kung fu are one of the uh, many martial arts uh, where the, uh, the the power has been reached through spiritual training and potential yeah you see every man is superman positive thinking yeah, iron will and all this stuff. Yeah, and so that was just from a German book. They are selling you martial arts as a spiritual thing that you can achieve the status of a Superman, Brad. In a book which I have not looked in for 20 years or so. And also very interesting because uh, our German sister Stephanie came up lately with the fact that, he said, that she told me, oh, have you something heard? There's something new uh, uh, tumbling around here on uh, the internet. There are now not only black holes, but white holes. And I have not depicted it here, but you can imagine that from that book from 1994 already, they have stated white holes in it. So it's not a new theory, but it's extreme old theory. And it's just only a theory like the theory of evolution and the big man and all the other stuff yeah it's just a theory it has nothing to do with the truth yeah 
So, what did they do with Bruce Lee? <clears throat> well, he became known as an iconic figure throughout the world, partly, of course, among the Chinese, based upon his portrayal of Chinese nationalism in his films and among American Asians for defying stereotypes associated with the emasculated Asian male. Yeah, he was the first one who was sexy on screen. Yeah, hitting other people, destroying people, flying around, kicking, hitting and, uh, and yelling and all the stuff. That's masculine. And it's sexy because he had six packs abs. Ask any women outside, outside, what do you think of six packs abs? And at least the younger will say that, oh yeah, that's that's what I like. Yeah. So before Bruce Lee, the Chinese actors has been stereotyped cast as only villains. Yeah. If they were Chinese, and most of the times they weren't. This is Christopher Lee here from British Heritage. Um, of course, he was coming from Italy, from the house of Carandini. He was from nobility of Dr. Fu Manchu, so a villain. And uh, Kung Fu, the complete uh, collections of an uh, Asian monk who went to, uh, to the West in the 19th century. Um, that was played by David Carradine, also not a Chinese actor. Yeah? And Breakfast at Tiffany's was also played not by a Chinese actor, but by Mickey Rooney. I have uh, forgotten to insert a picture here. And this is Charlie Chan's uh, favorite son. Yeah, So you see that uh, that is usually the, these people were pictured as civilians or that's maybe the one example they have a Chinese actor could be uh, acting smart so as a detective, Charlie Chan. Yeah. But usually in the 1960s, when Bruce Lee was go, having, uh, having its go and started uh, in the United States, um, there was a TV series, uh, maybe you do remember it, Brett, um, that was uh, Bonanza, the card rides. Yeah. And they had a Chinese cook, Hop Singh, yeah, who always claims that he will quit his job and that was a running gag on that uh, television show. Yeah. But he was always only the cook, yeah, and the other ones were in charge. They were running the range, and he was just a servant, yeah. So he got four masters, so the master and his three sons in that television series, yeah, and he was just a servant. And I think that is a high probability that Bruce Lee was just having it the other way around, because then in his 1972 movie, The Way of the Dragon, together with Chuck Norris, he was depicting protecting a Chinese restaurant in Italy, in Rome. Yeah, So he was the master coming from China to protect other Chinese people who are running a restaurant. Yeah, When, 10 years ago, it was Hop Singh serving only as the servant of the American masters as a cook. Far-fetched? It's just do your own research. But I think that's just not by coincidence. Yeah, it's a way of the dragon, huh? The dragon is one of the five animals of Gang Fu. There are dragons, cranes, tigers, snake, and monkeys. Yeah, and everybody has his own characteristics. Yeah, so dragon is not only the animal of the Chinese astrology, but also an animal in uh, spiritual Kung Fu and Kung Fu. Powerful, light, and quick trains the spirit of mind. So that uh, is Bruce Lee's uh, animal. That's the dragon. And he was born in the year of the dragon, in the hour of the dragon. And his nickname was Little Dragon. Yeah. We have talked about that he was born in San Francisco during a trip where his father, serving the Chinese opera, was uh, having uh, some uh, publications in San Francisco Chinatown. Then he had early roles as a child from the age of two months uh, until the age we left Hong Kong at the age of 18. Among them, the first one was, we have talked about that deliberately, elaborately, Golden Gate's Girl. GGG777, Esther Eng. That's the grave of Esther Eng. And Brad, I think that you can assume that she was a kind of a Catholic. Mm -hmm. Esther asked Bruce Lee to play the baby girl in Golden Gate Girl. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, so that is Bruce Lee at the age of two months. So he was destined to become an actor. She died at the age of 55 in New York City. Yeah, so much so. And I thought from the from the beginning that she must have real good connections to the industry and the industry means to special 
how, how to say that brotherhoods in the United States yeah, to special collaborations of people in the movie industry. Usually these people, they serve a certain brotherhood. So then he was getting his education in Kung Fu. After attending his uh, Tak Sun school, uh, Lee entered the primary school division of Catholic La Salle College, so he was uh, raised Catholic at the age of 12. So when he was visiting a Catholic school at the age of 12, due, poor the poor, due to poor academic performance and possibly poor conduct, he was transferred to St. Francis Xavier College, where he would be mentored by Brother Edward, a teacher and coach of the school boxing team. In 1958, Bruce won the Hong Kong School's boxing tournament, knocking out the previous champion in the final. This is San Francisco Xavier's College, one of the first Jesuits who ever visited China or Asia. So he got a Jesuit education, at least for two years, 56, 57 and a well, bit of 58. Their motto is gentle in manner, resolute in action. <laughs> that is very spot on to a martial artist, I suppose. And it was a brand new school that has been also only established in 1955. Yeah, this is Saint Francis College, SFX. The school was founded by Jesuit fathers in 1874. Later in 1893 by Maris brothers. And then these brothers were forced to leave Shanghai and moved to Hong Kong in 1949. The college was rebuilt. Yeah, and was named Saint Francis Xavier College to emphasize the direct link with Saint Francis Xavier College in Shanghai. And that's not Francis of Assisi. This is just the Jesuit Francis Xavier, where supposedly Pope Francis got his name from. Or San Francisco, by the way. So that means that the birth town of Bruce Lee, San Francisco, has a direct connection to San Francisco Xavier College. It's all Francis. Francis Co. Francis Xavier College. Yeah, it's even here, San Francis Xavier College. Yeah, it's even Francis. So that's the motto, and this is a school song of the school that Bruce Lee had visited. Uh, I don't think that you want to read that, Brad. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, let us sing jubilation, a song of duty done, a song of exaltation, of laurels fought and won, yes. Laurels, huh? Mm -hmm. Interesting word there, mm -hmm. yeah. Of many glorious years in store, a song to sound from shore to shore. They've carved out a name in the roll of fame, the boys of St. Francis Xavier's. Okay, and it continues in verse 2. Uplift your voices to proclaim and let the whole world heed in class field at work and at play saint saviors take the land yet not alone for worldly fame success or honor wealth or name for god and our faith first place we claim the boys of saint francis xaviers mm -hmm. Yeah. And is that enough? Yeah, that's enough. Can you imagine that it's uh, Xavier uh, sounds phonetically identical to Savior? Right. That's right. Today I looked it up, read uh, San Francisco College in English, and uh, look what they told us here. Prayers. Students usually offer a short prayer before classes or in morning assemblies with Our Father and will usually end the prayer yes. with... Saint Marcelin Champagnat, pray for us. And Saint Francis Xavier, pray for us. Images and idols. Well, you see what ritualistic things do to the mind, Michael. Yeah. 
you know, I think you and I can both vouch for that, uh, having attended a ritualistic type uh, church services for years. Is that correct? Sure, I was in the Catholic Church until I was 24 or so, yes. Yeah, see. And any of our listeners can Five. can vouch for that as well, because when you become part of the ritual, then it just seems so natural, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Because everybody's doing it. You don't question it, huh? anything. You don't question anything. No. No. But they are praying to saints, death, dead saints, yeah? In the Roman Catholic Church, the dead yes. are the saints. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's necromancy, yeah. which is forbidden in the Bible. Yeah, 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 that's right. So in the spring of 1959, um, before he left Hong Kong, Lee got into another street fight, and the police were called. Until his late teens, Lee's street fight became more frequent and included beating the son of a Fiat Triad family. Comes from the book Fighting Spirit. One day, one of us was beaten up by a gang from Kowloon. Bruce and the others went off to get revenge. At first, Bruce approached them as if to talk it over, but when we got close enough to the two biggest ones, he hit them without warning. Two, these two turned out to be the family of the local tribe, and William Chong's father, a high-ranking policeman, had to step in and mediate to prevent trouble escalating. Can you imagine last session or so when I talk, when you talked about that? Yeah, it took uh, considerably doings to erase Bruce's name from any list in the police. Yeah, now you know why. Because one of his best friends was the son of a high-ranking policeman. And he was always in for a fight. So that guy, Bruce Lee, was not into argument or what else. He what got into street fights. You never had to ask Bruce twice about a fight, said his younger brother, Robert. So I think that he's got a certain temper. The police detective came in and he says, excuse me, Mr. Lee, your son is really fighting bad in school. If he gets into just one more fight, I might have to put him in jail. And officially that's the reason why Bruce Lee moved over to United States. Although I think that one of only the other reasons is that he want to proclaim his United Nations citizenship by birth. Making just a short announcement that we would just like to show you some of his, of this uh, career highlights. Uh, in 1964, he was uh, at the uh, in the Long Beach Championships, uh, and he was demonstrated the uh, famous uh, one inch punch to people. Yeah, and you really have to realize that he's coming not only from a martial arts background, uh, but from an actor family. So he knows absolutely to set him into the spotlight. Yeah, look at the guy who's falling over in the chair and that would look much more dramatically as if somebody would have been pushed back. Yeah, and that is also not a push by itself. Uh, it's not a punch, uh, in my humble opinion, but more of a push. Yeah, so he knew exactly how to position him and if it looks the best. Yeah, this is a six inch punch. Yeah, it's uh, it's more than six inches and it's just not only a punch because he's using his entire body, of course. And this creates a dramatic effect with the chair because the man has uh, clearly to fall onto the chair. So it is just a dramatic thing added to the whole scene. So that uh, established then Bruce Lee as... Uh, one heck of a martial artist, of course. But that is not martial arts here. This is just a demonstration um, which uh, should impress people. Yeah, I'm not taking anything away from that man. I'm just trying to show you the fact that he mostly was looking for the artistical effect as being an actor. He wanted to achieve world stardom. He wanted to be world famous. Yeah, he does not want it to be the the best cage fighter. He wanted to be world famous. He wanted to have the most money in his possession, and so he could achieve that by using his ties in the industry, by uh, just combining his martial arts skills with being an actor. So, afterwards, he went to set 20th Century Fox, 1965. Yeah, for the role of Kato, a Chinese sidekick, uh, for the uh, Green Hornet series. Yeah, so that is the Green Hornet car, and that is Bruce Lee in disguise. So then came Batman and Robin, <laughs> one uh, episode, then Ironside, 
And then uh, here comes the price. These were just uh, minor roles because Hollywood was not ready for a Chinese actor having the star role. Then with one movie with uh, James Garner in Marlowe, where he was uh, kicking uh, in the air some uh, kind of a, of, a, of a light here. Then Long Street in 71 to 72. And then his career uh, took a big step forward in uh, then Hong Kong. And that's where we talk about now. In 1970, according to the most biographical papers, he crushed his fourth sequel nerve by the Good Mornings uh, training exercise where you bent over with a long bar on your neck. Yeah, it's like saying good morning to somebody. And he crushed this because he was not warmed up properly and all the stuff. The problem is that uh, people rely to this as his long time illness. But uh, in, when you see a paper of him, uh, then it was not the, uh, he, he hurt my lower back from tons of tons of exercises in brackets. Yeah, you can read it here. Yeah, but uh, it's not hinder me too much. Yeah, so it was not that dramatically that it has been spotted in many, many false movies. They claim that somebody has hit him in the back and therefore he could not walk for months. And then he had to write his book. And this is all BS. This is all BS. Because there's one guy who should know it. And that guy is the name of Tom Bleeker. Um, that's the uh, second husband to Bruce Lee's uh, widow. And he says, no, it's not about uh, a back injury of an uh, exercise of good mornings. It was just a sexual encounter he had. And afterwards, he went to the doctor. I have the personal papers from him with the doctor. And this is another myth of the Internet. Um, and he says that uh, he's uh, having a bet with anybody for, a, I think it was more than $10,000, um, uh, who was just uh, trying to... Um, Oh, what is it, Brett, if you have a bet and somebody is challenging, challenging, challenging you? Huh? So somebody, he's been challenging everybody um, to prove that it was about uh, training when it was about a sexual encounter he had. Yeah. So it, so many Internet things uh, are not the way they seem. Yeah. Look at that picture here from later than 1970-71. Yeah? Does it look like somebody has hurt his back extremely severe? No, of course not. Yeah, so. In 1971, Lee pitched a television series of his own tentative talent, The Warrior, discussing of which was also confirmed by Warner Brothers during a December 1907 interview on the Pierre Burton show, Lee stated that both Paramount and Warner Brothers wanted him to be in a modernized type of thing and that their Western idea was about to do it as a Western. Before I go into this, I promised you Deuteronomy. So when his wife was getting pregnant, or was already pregnant, then they had an encounter with her parents. And of course, they were not very, very delighted about the news. Uh -huh. um, they asked her to put the marriage offer here, have your baby and then see how you feel. They would rather Lee be a single mother and raise a bastard child than marry a near-do-well Chinaman. And Linda said, no, I will not wait. As the hours wore on and the tears and recriminations flowed, her uncle offered to take Linda for a drive to reason with her. Her uncle considered himself a devout Christian. You know that it means Catholic. This is against God's words, he told in the car. God doesn't want the races to mix. You are committing a sin. And Linda responds with God loves all his children. Her uncle quoted Deuteronomy 734. And we shall read this. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whether thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the, excuse me, the Giga, Gigashites and the Aramites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Havites, and the Jezebites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou, and when the, when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, 
Thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall give unto his, thy son. For they shall, or they will turn away with thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. Yeah, that was the argument uh, against the marriage. Because Bruce Lee was not a Christian nor a Catholic. He, he went to a Catholic school, yes, but uh, he declared himself to be an agnostic. Oh, an atheist. So he declared himself that he does not uh, believe in any God. It's just all about self-enlightenment. And what's really strange then is that you know that this guy uh, died a few years later and that his son or their uh, neutral son has also been killed. But that's in the biography here. That's in the biography. Yeah, and Linda says, uh, I don't believe that everyone is equal in the eyes of the Lord and God commands us to treat anyone equally. And she was being warned, you will be kicked out of the family. Yeah, well, what, what do you do when you are already pregnant, huh? It's a little too late. <laughs> it's a little too late, yes. I'm, I'm glad then yeah. that I'm not a, uh, not a woman, yeah, that I have to, to cope with this uh, extreme situation. Yeah, it's too late. Yeah, that's, that's it, actually. Yeah. So, this is Warner Brothers depicted as devils. Yeah. So, all these movies are about death, evil and destruction. Yeah. And there are so hilarious scenes in it when he's been hitting somebody through the wood, bread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, there's a hole depicting a guy. <laughs> no. Yes, Fist of Fury, he's using puppets. It's been cut, people cut puppets, swing around, tossed around, and then there are people landing here. So it's just, it's, it's Hollywood, huh? It's more or less Hollywood, yeah? You can see, clearly see that it is a puppet here. But it's just Hollywood. It's just Hollywood. Yeah? Rage, revenge, death. Mm -hmm. And then we got Way of the Dragon Bread. Finally, we are in the Colosseum, echoes a sound of a fight to the death. Where do we know the Colosseum and echoes and sound of a fight to the death know from? Where else? Where else? Rome. Yeah, Rome. Bruce's initial story concept for Way of the Dragon was based on the Warrior TV series he had pitched to Ted Ashley, a 19th century Ted Ashley from Warner Brothers, the 19th century Chinese Kung Fu master's flees from the fading Qing dynasty to San Francisco, Holy Francis, where he protects Chinese immigrants from exploitation. Yeah, but it did not uh, happen because it was far too early for a Chinese actor. He said, Kirk Douglas' Colosseum battle in Spartacus gave Bruce the idea for a final fight between himself and a Western bad guy. More importantly, Italy fit with his Eastwood strategy of conquering Hollywood. Yeah. Eastwood, you know, spaghetti westerns uh, made in Italy. Yeah, the good, the bad and the ugly, I think that is quite well known. Yeah. He said that, okay, then uh, if uh, Hollywood is not ready for me, I'll go to Hong Kong and make it big there. And then I come back and be a superstar like Eastwood. You just watch me. Bruce intended Way of the Dragon to be a spaghetti Eastern, the movie that would gain him traction in the West. Yeah, so he was playing the part of Tang Lung, which means China Dragon. So he was teaming up with uh, Chuck Norris there. Can you read what Chuck Norris has imprinted on his t-shirt? 
Okay, so that was in the Colosseum, although they have to build that uh, also in Hong Kong, so they just shot some out scenes and the rest is just a picture here on the background. <laughs> it's just movie, guys. Chuck Norris is claiming himself to be a Christian, evangelical Christian. Norris has visited Israel and voiced support for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. So he's into political actions also. He's supporting, uh, yeah, Bush family. Oh, great. Uh, so. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. In Way of the Dragon, uh, Lee introduced Norris to moviegoers as his opponent. Their showdown is considered one of the five scenes in martial arts film history. The role has been originally been offered to American karate champion Joe Louis. But Joe Louis uh, declined uh, because uh, he thought that Bruce Lee had an affair with his wife. And uh, I think that his wife was to blame because she set it up and it was most likely not true. But then uh, just uh, Norris got the role. Chuck Norris versus Bruce Lee, another encounter. Yeah. And there are people out there who are really guys who are very um, educated in the martial arts like uh, this guy here are showing the uh, notebooks of Bruce Lee that he had dates uh, with Chuck Norris so that he was actually the trainer of Chuck Norris although Norris has uh, denied that uh, because maybe some kind of a pride bread pride 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 yeah so that guy is very much into martial arts. It's one of the best channels out there with many, many interviews. The channel has been the, given the name KFG, which means Kung Fu Genius. Yeah, and, and Chuck Norris then decades later is explaining, yes, uh, it, it's, it's true that Bruce Lee was training me and uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, some other fan site Beardy is here showing a picture um, of uh, Bruce Lee having a real fight, uh, or so it seems, with Chuck Norris, and that Chuck Norris got punched in the face or kicked in the face or whatever. But that does not look uh, very healthy. So, just for the general introduction. Jim Kelly, another American martial arts uh, master of the 1970s, he says, uh, in my opinion, there's n never been anybody, in my opinion, like Bruce Lee. He has uh, won several karate championships and then started a, a career on its own with uh, kind of a black Bruce Lee, then Black Belt Jones. Um, in 1971, he fought four prestigious championships that same year, the world middleweight karate title in 1971, Long Beach. So he said he was unbeatable. Yeah, Bruce Lee was unbeatable. Yeah, he was so fast. And other people are supporting the claim and said, yeah, I have uh, watched uh, the fight uh, or a friend of mine has watched the fight uh, with uh, Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris and uh, Chuck Norris was actually defeated by Bruce. Yes. Yeah, and became a student even though you know he didn't admit it. And that's pride. That's nothing but pride. Yeah. You see, when really high-level, first-class, world-known martial artists are having a, a good things to say about Bruce Lee, for example, here, Judo Jean de Bell, um, been here working as an actor, um, you see that that guy has to be awesome. He was a martial artist, not a fighter. This is an interview here of one of the best fighters of the 1970s. The name is Joe Louis. When I talked about that, he initially should have gotten the role in the movie Way of the Dragon in Rome. And he was asked about uh, Bruce Lee. He said, I trained with Bruce Lee from 68 to 69 and he and I had a falling out. Yeah, that was because of his wife, his jealous wife or what else. Did you learn a lot from Bruce? And he said he was too physically he was too philosophical, meaning he was too abstract in his communications, but he had fabulous ideas. As a martial artist, I consider him one of the all-time greats. Do you think he would have made a good full-contact fighter? And Lewis answered, no, because I don't think he could have taken a good punch. That's also my argument. Why do you say that? And Lewis says, his skinny neck and his skinny jaw, his neck was just too long. You just don't see long neck people up there on top. Well... Nobody can find out, but uh, that's uh, the thing that he got into martial arts. 
But the thing is, nobody knows if he could take a good punch, a real good punch, by a heavyweight or what else. I got a magazine here. It's a Washington Star, printed in Washington, D.C. on August the 16th, 1971, of course, not 1771, so Washington Star. And there we read the following. It's an article. Chuck Norris and, it would be Mike Stone here, the former bodyguard or karate teacher of uh, Priscilla Presley, who had an affair with Priscilla Presley, Elvis Presley's wife, um, have between them won every major karate tournament in the United States, at least once Lewis was grand national champion three successive years. So speaking of Chuck Norris, Mike Stone and Joe Lewis. So the, fight, the, the, the first row of the American karate practitioners in the 1970s. And this Washington DC paper, Washington Star, says in 1971, Lee, speaking of Bruce Lee, handles and instructs these guys almost as a parent would do a young child or a parent would a young child lee handles and instructs these guys chuck norris mike stone Joe Louis, yeah world champions almost as a parent would a young child and that's what i found so don't come up with the idea that that guy was uh, just an actor he wasn't yeah some fun. So, Colosseum and fight to the death. Speaking of Italy. Yeah. Speaking of uh, Italy. Speaking of Italy, of fake Italy. Yeah. Speaking of fake uh, martial arts scenes, because uh, if somebody approaches you with a knife, yeah, you don't make this kind of action and then uh, throw your wooden rack onto his uh, back, would you? That guy still has a knife in his arms. Yeah, so it's just a movie. It is not the kind of uh, fight that he would uh, deliver if he was being attacked by somebody. So this is the infamous Colosseum, where I do not know how many Christians had been slayed. And this is Chuck Norris, an epic showdown of an American claiming to be himself as an evangelist um, against a Chinese guy claiming to be uh, not uh, having any faith in God at all. This is the Colosseum with the gladiators. Gladio means sword. We know that from the Kennedy sessions. That means sword. And there were lions too, whom the real Christians been, were being fed too. Yeah? And Colosseum, I had an interesting time of the Colosseum. I said, well, uh, just hang on. That is, that is so um, obvious. Of course, it's colossal. Yeah, that's okay. But look at the origin of the word. Colossus gigantic. Perhaps a reference to the colossal statue of Nero that long stood nearby. And then see Colossus. Colossus, a gigantic statue. From Greek, Colossus, gigantic statue of unknown origin. The Greek word was used by Herodotus of giant Egyptian status and by Romans of the bronze Helios at the entrance of the harbor of Rhodes. And that is, of course, the Coloss of Rhodos, meaning a depiction of Helios, the sun god. So, the Coloss of Rhodes, German it's Rhodos, yeah, one of the ancient seven world wonders, bread. Yeah, it's nothing else but Helios, the sun god. Or Apollo, and name any other similar name. Yeah, so that is a stadium. It's a place of worship for the Roman sun god. 
yeah, it's like that we are in France, huh? With the Arc de mm. Triomphe. Oh my, it's all the same. Yeah, that you know, huh? Oh yeah. Yeah. The altar of the fatherland it was, I think, huh? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. At least they are using a Pontiac bread, so something American. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you see that it's all just veneration of images and idols. Of course. You see that uh, it's not, not just only Spartacus bread, but it's just that uh, Christians have been killed there. And the fact is that it is a, a fight to the death there with Chuck Norris, with a Christian, so to speak. Yeah, he he claims to be himself evangelical. Yeah, that's what I always uh, see when I look at the Colosseum. That, uh, yeah, that is just a Roman uh, place of uh, worship and and of killing. So then you have finally then after Way of the Dragon you have then uh, Enter the Dragon, yeah, and it starts with the Shaolin Monk Temple, yeah. So religion once again, Buddhism, Taoism, with a temple. Yeah, and he's using here body uh, double, yeah. So it, he does not make uh, the action on its own. He's using a stunt double, and he said that yeah you have to. Yeah, so another stunt over here, Yuen Va, he did not deliver this, but it's been all sold as Bruce Lee the Superman does his own stuff. Also, Jackie Chan does not own, also uh, every time does not do his own stunts, yeah, so there are also stuntmen involved. Yeah, you see here with the microphone, yeah, these are movies. People don't fight like this and you make these strange noises and, and, and all the stuff, yeah, and... Uh, <laughs> If you are really hit, yeah, that hurts like uh, like something. I can tell you, yeah. So it's just a movie, yeah. This, people think they take it for granted, yeah. This is just a movie. It has to be look fancy and uh, it's dangerous as well as there are snakes involved. Yeah, mm. Jackie Chan has been here uh, killed in that scene. This is Jackie Chan. Yeah, there he is using a puppet. It's unbelievable. But uh, what does um, Enter the Dragon mean, Brad? Look at this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Enter the Dragon. It's like uh, Mick Jagger from The Rolling Stones says, um, please allow me to introduce myself yeah, in the Sympathy for the Devil. Please allow me to introduce Satan. It's Enter the Dragon. Yeah, I know that they claim that the dragon is a mythical uh, animal and it's just a part of a Kung Fu style. Yeah, but Enter Dragon would mean that you've been entered by Satan and that you that Satan would enter. And as Satan is a spirit, Satan can only enter um, um, a living being. He cannot enter through the front door and said, Hi, I'm Satan, how are you? Yeah, when Luke 23, Two, three speaks about then entered Satan into Jesus. He entered into his body as a spirit. So he was then possessed. You said Judas, Michael. You said Judas, right? Yes. Yeah, it sounded almost like you said Jesus. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Neil. Judas. Yeah, in, in German it is Judas. Yeah, so nice. it's, it's, it's Jude, Judas in, uh, in English. In German it is Judas. Yeah, okay. So then entered Satan into Judas. Yeah, so enter the dragon is clearly, uh, if you see it from a biblical way, it's then been possessed by Satan. And the, the movie devil, is yeah. only about killing, killing, killing and more killing. Mm. It's about drugs, it's about killing. Well, yeah, there you go. It's about death, isn't it? It's about death, yeah. Game of death, yeah. Yeah, Game of Death is the last uh, picture, but this is a picture called Enter the Dragon. But uh, nevertheless, 
Um, Enter the it, devil. Enter the Satan. Yeah. yeah. In uh, John 13, 27, uh, we read the following line. And after the sob, Satan entered into him. Right. Yeah. It's uh, it's the same uh, G, so Greek, going Greek, 1525. Aizerkomai. Yeah. This means uh, to enter literally or figuratively, arise, come in, enter in, go in. Yeah. So it does not mean to somebody knock to the door, but it just means that uh, somebody will be possessed by Satan. Yeah. So what what do you think if if a movie has been called Enter the Dragon, and you know that in the biblical terms, dragon and Satan is means the devil. <laughs> Dragon, serpent, devil, Satan, always the same name for an entity which is just a spirit which can possess living beings. Yeah. And then the last movie is called then Game of Death. So it's all negative. It's it's a big boss. It's Fist of Fury. It's the way of the dragon or the way of Satan. It's enter the dragon or enter Satan. And it's a game of death. So what do you expect? Uh, it's just all negative. The martial arts are not being used to just demonstrate or to just uh, self-defense. It is just to kill people. Every time he's killing people. In every movie he is constantly killing people. Game of death. What do we expect? Uh, Brett, what does game of death mean? Look at the capital letters. G-O-D. Yeah. Yeah, so that is just nobody fights like this, of course. This is just in for the camera. Yeah, and now this is a very famous uh, martial artist from the Philippines. His name is Danny Inocento. Yeah, with his nunchakus. Yeah, and this is uh, one of the scenes here Bruce Lee allegedly killing somebody with an arm bar, which is a move which is very famous here, uh, Anderson Silva in the uh, mixed martial arts. Yeah, so this is Danny Inocento. Yeah, I was very uh, intrigued by that name. Can you imagine what that means here, Inocento? Mm -hmm. He's coming from the Republic of the Philippines. Look what I found. Catholicism became the dominant religion and Manila became the western hub of trans-Pacific trade. I said, aha, okay, interesting. It's a founding member of the United Nations. I said, oh, I did not know that. Look. Oh, wow. Santo. In Portuguese, for example, it means holy. Hmm. And 49. Yeah, that's right. It's how be it. The Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Yeah, what strikes me is not only the, the verse, but uh, the outcome of it. Yeah, because that was Stephen. Mm who was uh, telling the people then, and uh, that is the outcome here. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. Oh, yes. So imagine mm -hmm. what that means if you talk uh, about somebody of this, uh, of the Roman Catholic Church, for example, or another temple. What else kind of a temple? It's, it's not different if it is a Roman Catholic temple, an evangelical temple, a Jehovah's Witness temple, or... King Königsaal, it's been said here, so it's a room of the king. Or if it is a Buddhist temple, or a Taoist temple, or what else temples there are. Yeah, if you say then that God does not dwell in buildings made out of hand. You see, Bruce Lee's intellectual curiosity led him to branches into new areas of inquiry. He took two courses in psychology and two philosophy classes. 
the two subjects became lifelong passions. After college, he added hundreds of philosophy and psychology books to his personal library of over 2,500 books, carefully reading and transcribing his favorite passages in his notebooks. His favorite authors included Thomas Aquinas. And I said, oh no, just wait. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The father of the Roman Catholic Church who tells you that there is no inherent right of possession. I remember from a, a reading I said I, I have uh, taken notice of uh, that uh, South, Ameri South African guy who was in, is in the SDH, that famous guy. Oh, what's the name? World famous. Uh, Jörg is always talking about when it comes down to, yeah, he's using the wrong Bible. Uh, the most famous SDA preacher, Walter Veit. Ah. Oh, Walter Veit. Oh, yeah, Walter Veit. Ask Walter Veit and he will, he will come up with this stuff. In his notepads, Bruce copied down passages from his favorite authors, Plato, Hume, Descartes and Aquinas. From Western tradition and Lao Tzu, Chong Tzu, Miyamoto, Musashi and Alan Watts from the Eastern. One of his most important influences was the renegade Indian mystic Jida Krishnamurti. Yeah, selected as age 14 by the Occultist Theosophical Society as the predestined world teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, of course he has to reject his role as a world teacher because truth is a pathless land. Bruce knew by heart the Ave Maria and other Catholic prayers. I guess that he would have known that uh, Saint Francis prayer. He could recite long biblical passages from memory. Despite his resistance, the Catholic brothers at La Salle had pounded Christianity into his head. That's incorrect, huh? These are Catholic brothers. They had pounded Catholicism into his head. But mm -hmm. unlike his mother, he was not a believer. He was an atheist, perhaps because he could not tolerate the idea of an authority higher than his own. When asked by Esquire magazine if he believed in God, Bruce replied, Ah, to be perfectly frank, I really do not. If his friends brought up the subject, he would joke, I don't believe in anything, I believe in sleeping. There is one interesting video, and then we close this section here off. It's called Bruce Lee in Hell. Hmm. I saw Bruce Lee in Hell, testimony of Brother Slim from Malaysia. It is not that I would uh, recall that uh, statement here word by word. It is just uh, interesting that uh, every time that subject comes up with Bruce Lee in Hell, uh, people they make their comments. Yeah, and most people got it right. Yeah, his last movie was called Enter the Dragon, and they make make the um, announcement of Revelation twelve nine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so many other people don't get it. How I don't believe you. How can a person as good as Bruce Lee, who was a great family man and a great role model, who inspired so many people go to hell? Yeah, because the questioning man or woman naming himself Red Drago, yeah, obviously does not know anything about the Bible. Yeah, who was a great family man, yes, and has a, a definite chief aim goal. I, 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 it's always me. It's not that we see him in hell, but he was not saved by faith. He was not uh, objecting to Jesus, Jesus Christ uh, being the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah, so that's a that's a problem in it. Yeah, and mostly the people got it right here in the comment section. Yeah, it's not the testimony; it's just the, the reaction to it which uh, was uh, keeping me busy here. Is Bruce Lee in hell? Yeah, Bruce Lee does not believe in anything but himself. Yeah, only God knows. But he was not promoting and he was not teaching the preaching the gospel to every creature. He was preaching yeah. his gospel to every creature. Into their body. But uh, we will see, but it is not the way of Bruce Lee which will save you, because he said that uh, the truth has no path, but it is Jesus Christ. Yep, that's right. Speaking about philosophy, people also overestimate the stuff, um, because all these martial arts claim that they have a certain philosophy in it, and they love philosophy, but it's just, uh, 
in biblical terms it's just vain deceit because it's not the real philosophy it's just uh, like the being enlightened uh, you see martial arts is just the art of uh, of hitting somebody yeah nobody in this martial arts scene is doing anything just for self protection or to help others but uh, in their movies uh, you see the evil things they are being promoted yeah that's that's the sad thing of it yeah, so a, a lifetime martial arts is a noble spiritual path. You see, this is, uh, is it's hilarious, yeah, because uh, it it is a, a martial art is a physical art, yeah. Anything else is spiritual, but to combine it with a spiritual path, uh, you just need an excuse for just uh, hitting and kicking people. Yeah, I. I dare to say this. Yeah, it's, it's not just to feed the hungry and to help the poor. It is just for your self, uh, self proclaiming that you are a master of something, Brad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the amount of books does not say anything about your intellectual status. Only in this world. Yeah. So this is an argumentum at populum. Yeah, which means a majority argument. Yeah, it does not say that these books have any value, other than to uh, think yourself as a supreme being. Yeah, so you see that this is just somebody who's presenting his knowledge to you, or his science. Knowledge actually means science, or science means knowledge. Yeah, the source book is Chinese philosophy, and he was just. Uh, having things uh, copied out of the books and then he has made his own book uh, yeah sad to say so this is the engravement on his uh, in the cemetery bread your inspiration continues to guide us towards our personal liberation <laughs> and then you got on the left hand you got a Taoist symbol yin and yang Yeah, it looks pretty, doesn't it? Personal liberation. <laughs> from any bounds, from any orders, yeah. from any commandments, huh? Right. Yeah, you shall be gods. That's my understanding in it. So that is, this is on the grave of Bruce Lee and right is on the grave of Brandon Lee. Yeah, and it's just all another philosophy. Yeah, how many more times will you remember a certain afternoon of your childhood and some afternoon and <laughs> you see that won't help anybody uh, not for the internal life yeah this is just uh, it's, it's in every case it's worshiping the self yeah it sounds like a awareness training of buddhists uh, to me when bruce lee was asked about his religious affiliation he replied none whatsoever and when asked if he believes in god he said to be perfectly frank i do not yeah so he's flashing manu kanuta to chuck norris he's flashing it to john saxon these must all be coincidences that i found huh must all be coincidences yeah, also the famous V sign, which uh, reminds me here, uh, the V sign for victory bread in the satanic word reminds me also of the horns of the golden calf altar. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so that's why I copied this V from the extraterrestrial, of course, uh, on top of this uh, original altar, which you can find in uh, Saudi Arabia because Saudi Arabia has protected uh, famous historian places where Moses dwelt with the Israelites and then the Israelites under the guise of the high priest Aaron yeah they have fallen away and did not want to wait for Moses for the Ten Commandments but instead they just were just worshipping and building this golden calf and this is the golden calf altar so it is in plain sight if you strive for the truth you can of course look for martial arts movies and all the stuff of entertainment all day long but what about going to the real thing of it all to the real source of truth the Bible is true it's truth 
Yeah, but we are just surrounded by all these uh, Satan worshippers here, yeah, and uh, sometimes people do not know that they are Satan worshippers. Yeah, because everybody is doing the things that they flash on television and say, oh yeah, it's cool, it just means rock on or what else. Yeah, we are just surrounded with uh, Roman symbology all over the place, not only Concordia or Apollo or Colosseum. Yeah, it's also justice, yeah, justitia, justice, yeah, the statue of justice in uh, Germany, and it's everywhere. Yeah, these people are worshipping images and idols. If you are worshipping Buddha, you're not worshipping Jesus Christ. If you are worshipping Taoism, you're not worshipping Jesus Christ. If you are worshipping millions of Indian gods, you're certainly not worshipping Jesus Christ. And that's the problem with the word God. Maybe you know this uh, infamous or this famous uh, Swedish group of the 1970s and 80s called ABBA. ABBA does not only mean Agneta, Björn, Benny and Anifried, so the four uh, letters of their names, but ABBA uh, in Aramaic means father, because that is a word which uh, has been uh, officially been printed in the King James Bible. Look at this, ABBA means father. And that are one reason uh, for the fact that Abba was extremely successful. From their biography they say when they rise to be a supergroup one of the members, uh, the female one called Anna Fried, um, the, uh, she was trying to, about her life, she was uh, becoming a vegetarian and she was being uh, busy with the teachings of the spiritual Indian uh, leader Krishnamurti. And Krishnamurti um, is here depicted as the Maitreya, as the savior of any Besson yeah, in the beginning of the 20th century. Now this is Krishnamurti, this is any Besson. Any Besson, on the other hand, was a 33 degree Scottish Freemason, Le Grand Romain. And she was in a theosophical society after she has been known the readings of Helena Petrova Blavatsky, another theosophist, which means uh, to mix theology together with philosophy, and uh, so forth, and so forth, and so forth. And afterwards, then uh, this uh, Krishnamurti he quit the theosophical society. And uh, between that, uh, she has, um, it has been founded the Order of the Rising Sun, the Order of the Star of the East, and they have, have a cult of Krishnamurti. Yeah, and then Krishnamurti got away. And uh, she was into believing that she was, in former times, she was an ape. And it's, 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 it's everywhere. You see, Order of the Rising Star of the Pentagram. Ha ha. So that means the Order of Lucifer. Mm hmm. In 1909, Mr. Liedpeter, so the uh, colleague of uh, Anna, Annie Besson, discovered that Yidu Krishnamurti is regarded as a vehicle for the Lord Maitreya, the world teacher. The world teacher, like in the UNESCO, United Nations, Education, Science and uh, Cultural Organization, yeah, like Robert Muller's World Core Curriculum, one world teacher. Yeah, they will get one education all over the world, all Luciferian doctrine. Ye can become as gods, you can upgrade your body, become a superstar, uh, can sing like uh, Celine Dion, and you can uh, jump like Bruce Lee, and whatever you wish to achieve. Yeah, they will tell you that medicine and science can do it all for you. You can become a superwoman or a superman. World Core Curriculum, the World Teacher, or the World's Teachings, World Core Curriculum. Yeah, this is all theosophical. This is just mixing the holy with the profane. This is uh, theology mixed with uh, sophistry. Krishnamurti says, I maintain that truth is a pathless land. Yeah, this is only just a sentence that you really have to uh, recall from memory now. Truth is a pathless land. The world parliaments of religions. Mm -hmm. It's like a one world religion. And that is not a new idea. We are talking about the 1920s or 1893. Yeah, so this is the Order van de Ster in het Osten, that's Dutch, Netherlands. Yeah, so you see pentagrams, you see everywhere. 
Yeah. And now please compare the teachings of Yida Krishna Murti. So please read, uh, compare the teachings of Krishna Murti with the teachings of Bruce Lee in comparison with the teachings of the King James Bible. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Uh, truth has no path. That's what Bruce Lee said. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Luke 3 4. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And then uh, John 14 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Yeah. Yeah, but it's just, I think, extremely clear that uh, Bruce Lee has his philosophy from other philosophers before him. Yeah, so to regard him as a big philosopher, it, it, it's just not correct. I'm not taking anything away from his physical abilities. But although he has studied philosophy and he contained, I do not know how many thousands of books, yeah, this is just really a ripoff, and on that regard, of Jilu Krishnamurti. Mm -hmm. So there was were people before him who came up with the same idea that the truth is a pathless land. So there's nobody who can who can lead you. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So he could not become the world leader because he knows he says that he's a, is a pathless land, and uh, Jesus Christ says truth has no path. Yeah. Or in other words, when Jesus says that I'm the way and the truth and the life, that means that. Um, Krishna Murti would claim that Jesus is a pathless land, or Bruce Lee would claim that Jesus has no path. Mm -hmm. Right. That sounds right. Yeah, because they're in the spirit of Antichrist, Michael. Yes. In the spirit of Antichrist, as well as this uh, female singer from Abba, yeah, who is into Krishna Murti. Yeah. Yeah. Krishna Moti, the spiritual force behind Bruce Lee. In the teachings of Krishna Moti, Bruce Lee discovered the true foundation of his style, Jeet Kune Do. You cannot look through an ideology uh, through a screen of words, though hopes and fears, so say Krishna Moti, applying this to the martial arts, Bruce Lee finds you cannot express and be alive through static, put together form, etc. Yeah, that's just about uh, the worship of the self, yeah? So we're talking about a satanic world who takes every means possible to distract you from the word of God. Yeah. So what does it mean when the female singer here, Anna Fried, the dark one from Abba, means father. Yeah, but they don't tell you that it's an Arabic, Arabic word, so they claim it's just about their four initials. Yeah. Um, she has a quote and she said, I also have a very strong faith in God. And I always claim that the word God has no copyright. Yeah, she says, I've realized that I'm a very strong woman. I have also very strong faith in God. I guess that's what helped me through this. Yeah. And then it was revealed that she was in a lawsuit on, uh, against Markus Bongard, a Polish-born Shaolin monk and founder of the Buddhist Temple and Health Resort. Young Torp in Sweden and Frida, no stranger to alternative medicine and philosophies, first got in touch with Mr. Bogart when her husband became ill and she subsequently became Bongart's Qigong pupil. The connection led to Frida and Henry Smith inventing 4.5 million pounds in the construction of the Young Torp temple. So they did not ask God to pray to God, but they constructed a temple for more than 4 billion pounds. That's a bit more than 4 million US dollars. Can you imagine that? This is ABBA, the world famous group ABBA from Sweden. Yeah, One of them is into Krishna Murti and just construction uh, a temple for more than 4 million pounds. Yeah, these are all not worshippers of the Bible. Otherwise they would not be in that position. Oh, it's very good that she's holding a tambourine here. Yeah, the, the only number one hit that ABBA had in, I think it was 1976, bred in the United States of America, was Dancing Queen. Mm -hmm. Feel the beat of the tambourine, is the refrain. Mm -hmm. 
yeah so any more questions i did uh, so many sessions in german about it yeah so that's it in this session here we have talked about all the movies or majority of movies and we have talked about philosophy we have talked about that uh, they try to sell you kung fu as a spiritual thing and they try to sell you that if an average guy a skinny uh, short guy uh, can become a world hero a superhuman and all the stuff yeah these are people out there who are telling you all these lies yeah like Sadhguru and uh, yeah, they are all worshipping images and idols and at least they are worshipping themselves because they want to make it big in the world yeah so they are millionaires all on the path yeah how to say that uh, millionaires on the path that uh, they want to achieve uh, world fame and riches and bruce lee in his uh, chief main goal he said that uh, i would have 10 million in my possession to it and and then and then after that achieve inner harmony and peace yeah but not before he's got 10 million in his possession yeah that's the condition and let me tell you that this uh, anna frida girl um, after the loss of her daughter in a car accident if i remember correctly she married a real prince in europe and her fortune is estimated to be around 200 million dollars and that is also the same girl, and uh, you find it maybe very strange, but it isn't very strange, who has the lead vocals on one of the most famous songs of ABBA, which is called Money, Money, Money. Must be funny in a rich man's world. Yeah? So that is Anna Frieda here, or Frieda in short, yeah? talking about money. And, uh, talking about money and then afterwards she married uh, somebody who got cancer then uh, they built a temple for more than four million pounds and uh, when that poor guy uh, then died um, she achieved uh, to be the heiress of a fortune of more than 200 million bucks so that's just a little bit more than bruce lee would have achieved it i think yeah but she did not achieve it by work but she just achieved it by marriage so women are sometimes much more clever than guys huh definite chief aim yeah i will lift the way up please and achieve inner harmony and happiness yeah with 10 million bucks yeah everybody's chasing you everybody wants to have some part of the 10 millions but he will achieve inner harmony and happiness that is bound to money so thank you for holding on to me thank you for your patience brett and to handing it over to you my beloved brother in christ yeah michael you know i i was thinking about this study we did on the book of acts and there is a chapter in acts that that really explains a couple things you know you know that that old man that we have the old woman if you're a female uh, when you become a new creature in christ you give away the old and you put on the new you put on the armor of god you you understand these things you study these things you take them seriously and uh here in acts 17 verse 30 and this this chapter is a great chapter. I often refer to it. Maybe I should just read the whole chapter. Um, uh, well, let's just start with uh, Acts 17.22. How does that sound? Yeah. Acts 17.22. Then, then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill <laughs> and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that all things ye are too superstitious for i passed by and beheld your devotions i found an altar with this inscription to the unknown god whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him i declare unto you god that made the world and all things therein seeing that he is lord of heaven and earth dwelleth not in temples made with hands neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things 
and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, not the planet. Right, Michael? And hath determined the times before appointed, the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him. And find him, though he be not far off from every one of us, for in him we live and move in our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought to think not, excuse me, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. And the key verse, and the times of this ignorance God winked at. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed in a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he ordained. Wherefore, he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of this resurrection of the dead, some mocked and others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from among them, howbeit certain men clave unto him and believed among which was Dionysus, the Aphrodite, or excuse me, a reprogite, and the woman named Damaris, and others with them. So we see that we have an ignorance. We grow up ignorant. But there are chosen few of us who question our ignorance. Question, you know, isn't there something deeper here? Isn't there, there's, there's something else Am I missing it? Yeah, I think we missed it in our early early portions of life, Michael. You know, I'll, we I'll may look. have had little rays of that light hit us at that time, but we really couldn't go. Go ahead, Michael. You're yeah, I was just so fascinated that uh, it started with the Mars Hill, the martial arts, and I said, oh, yeah, that's a good find, yeah? Yeah, that's right. Mm. Yeah. You see, men of Athens, yeah, can you imagine Athens was the capital or is the capital city of Greece and Athens is where the Olympia game started and it's just a veneration of the body, yeah, spear, mm -hmm. uh, throwing spears, running, uh, high jumps and all the stuff, you see, that's all just a veneration of the body. Uh, it's uh, it's very interesting, but uh, I think that the Book of Acts is one of the most uh, underestimated works in the Bible, and I think that I it's, agree, for yeah. some very good reasons it's it's mm. not very prominent out there because it's just been kept under the radar for many 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 uh, reasons. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm so glad that we had that study with your Glissman. Okay. Mm -hmm. on this on this uh, book of Acts because there was so much in that study. Um, I know that, you know, uh, York had a strong focus on a very particular matter and, uh, you know, sadly, he never, he never really uh, talked about it till later, much later on that uh, he was... Uh, really uh, upset maybe with the, with the outcome uh, that uh, he was trying to prove that uh, that um, the gospel did not go to the Gentiles from the point where uh, Stephen was stoned but in reality it did but I think that each each of us have our own, set of circumstances that we are working on in our lives, in our studies, and and that at times that we uh, um, we get struck, you know, uh, in, in just complete amazement 
Uh, this is one of those chapters, Michael, that struck me in amazement, you know, dealing with the unknown God whom mm. we ignorantly worship. I mean, you just, I just think of my youth, you know, and growing up um, thinking that I had real faith, whereas I really did not have any idea what real faith was at that time. Uh, I think... Um, there are a lot of people in that in that boat hmm. and uh, God has to reveal himself to you in his manner not not by the manner of of anyone's opinion this is something far deeper and you know sometimes it just it just resonates and sometimes it does not. But, you know, the truth has a certain ring to it, I think Tom Press would say. You know. It does. It has a really strong, strong vibrance, I would say. But, uh, yeah, Michael, I, I think that's a good way to close the session today. Thinking about it, you know, that... Uh, that yeah, younger in life we we had these idols and and we had these uh, these artists that uh, that we admired because it was something to us at that time. It was getting us through some rough times where we would just uh, put our focus and our efforts into uh, yeah. I, I really wish I could decimate that guy that stuck me in a locker you know <laughs> at school well actually sadly uh, it's one one time i actually hit someone else michael someone did stuff me in a locker at school <coughs> so you know, you know in in junior high school yeah and uh and uh i got off the bus with him because we were neighbors and I smacked him in the jaw as hard as I could, made him cry. Mm -hmm. But, you know, sometimes you got to let people know mm -hmm. when they've gone too far. That was a violation in my youth. I, I would not allow for that. My dad did teach me how to fight, you know. And that was one instance, only one instance where I used it, but um, not necessarily proud of it because, you know, after that happened, he came back and did me in too. So mm -hmm. I happened to find uh, X chapter this week where uh, I was uh, searching for and which struck me extremely. I know that from memory, but I had to look it up, and this is X seven forty eight. Hmm. Yeah, that's right. It's how be it, the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me? Saith the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Yeah, what strikes me is not only the the verse, but uh, the outcome of it. Yeah, because that was Stephen, mm. who was uh, telling the people then, and uh, that is the outcome here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I see. I see. Oh yes. So imagine mm. what that means if you talk uh, about somebody of this. Uh, of the Roman Catholic Church, for example, or another temple. What else kind of a temple? It's it's not different if it is a Roman Catholic temple, an evangelical temple, a Jehovah's Witness temple, or King Königsaal, it's been said here, so it's the room of the king, or if it is a Buddhist temple, or a Taoist temple, or what else temples there are. Yeah, if you say then that God does not dwell in buildings made out of hand, they will stone you. Like they did before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one of the witnesses right. was Saul, later than Paul, one of the uh, prolific uh, apostle Paul, who, in my humble opinion, then was uh, replacing uh, Judas. 
Yeah, the betrayer. And they stoned him. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What house will you build me, said the Lord? What is the place of my rest? Yeah, they could not take it. They could not take it. And I think that nothing has changed in 2000 years. If we do a session about Christopher Lee, if we do a session about Bruce Lee, whomsoever, mm -hmm. yeah, people would like to stone us. We are destroying images and idols. We are talking bad about their idol. Millions of fanboys will get after us. Nobody wants to read the Bible. Nobody can hear the truth because they are just want to, to move on to worship a golden calf. Bruce Lee uh, had problems with his eyes. One leg was longer than the other. He had issues with his health. He had a, 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 a pain in the back and all the stuff. Yeah, and many, many, many things more. But he was presented for a short amount of time as the ultimate superhuman hero. And that's the picture what is being handed over to the next generation, to the next generation, to the next generation, and does not serve the man, the individual character, does not serve right. It is not the truth. And that's why he was quoted saying, the truth has no path. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how pathetic. Yeah, for Bruce, the truth had no path, I guess, because his life was a lie. <laughs> he just wanted to achieve fame, world fame, 10 million yeah, bucks. Yeah, that's and in the right. Bible, that's all it was about. Yeah. Bible, the Bible, the My Bible definite says you, chief fame, you said, right? You can only serve God or the mammon, says the Bible. And he says, yes. I will have in my possession 10 million bucks. Yeah. I, 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 I. It's not about his family, his son, Brandon, his daughter, Shannon, yeah, his wife, Linda, his like, friends. Uh, it's all about me, me, me. Yeah, that's right. You're starting to sound like Ozzy Osbourne there. Oh, then Remember we have that to close song, the Crazy soon. Train. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm closing the se close down the session. If I, I do not want to be. Uh... I'm just teasing you. <laughs> Trying to get a laugh out of you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, but... it's it's not much to laugh about. Uh, in the next I know, place. I know, yeah. but yeah, you gotta but laugh sometimes, even when it's an odd. Yeah. Day. It's been an odd day for you, Michael. Odd week for you. Yeah. And uh, you know this; these things do happen. I I happen to have a very busy week here, and um, but uh, I just you know hope in the end that we can rejoice and be glad in this life in, in what we did. You know, mm -hmm. that's the goal here. How about the movie when it comes down to the song Money, Money, Money? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, it's a Rolls Royce. Ah, yeah, it's also mm -hmm. the, the, um, the vehicle uh, which uh, Bruce Lee wanted to have. Oh, and he never got. Yeah, he No, which is very money. interesting because later when we move on in the sessions, uh, uh, we will see that Bruce Lee has a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> uh, but the movie director um, he approached Ron Man Shaw he has of course a Rolls Royce because in Hong Kong the ultimate status symbol at least in the 1970s was a Rolls Royce I see in 1970 yeah that's right yeah nowadays maybe it's a big Tesla or, or a Bentley or what else I do not know. <laughs> yeah right yeah exactly. just, just also for all for the for the show yeah Ron Man Shaw Rolls Royce. Yeah, of course. What do we expect? Yeah, these people are worshipping mammon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's what sets them apart to uh, yeah. It sets them apart. You see that this is the symbol that I am a very uh, important person. VIP. Very important person. And you see that um, people don't get it right because they sometimes think, yeah, okay, if you drive a Porsche like Steve McQueen, or if you drive a Ferrari like I do not know who, 
yeah, then you made it. No, you haven't made it unless you see in the back seat and have somebody other driving you. Yeah, you yeah, need to have right. a servant who drives you. A chauffeur, yeah. A chauffeur, yeah. That's the real power when you are ordering, instructing other peoples to be a servant. Yeah, then you're the master in the satanic world. Yeah, then you are the master. Money, money, money was long after Bruce Lee has died, but you see the strife to fortune and fame. He wanted to have a gold one. Yeah, it's, it's all about the money. It's vain deceit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your body won't last, especially no. not if you are so fragile built like Bruce Lee, that won't last 20 more years. So it is just only a show off for some movie to get him into the industry. And afterwards he said that he uh, wanted to instruct movies as a director. Now, what, what's, what's in the mind of people then who wanted to play it big time with the big money? And then suddenly the servant becomes a master, huh? You would have to see it for your own eyes and I'm promising you it will get uh, more interesting and more interesting uh, from now on. But maybe that's necessary, I do not know. So I'm, I'm quiet now. Hmm. All right, Michael. So thanks again for putting the session together for us today. And I think we can close it down. Mm -hmm. Till next time, everyone. Hope everyone's doing all right. And we hope to see you then, God willing. Maranatha. Maranatha.